Welcome to Brightly You Radiant Being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we use our good and bad experiences, friendship, and passions to inspire thought-provoking conversation and soul-driven advice. This season, we'll travel from the fool's journey to the hero's adventure to better help you create a life worth living and step more brightly into yourself, inch by inch. Hey, Amy. <laughs> hey, Tracy. <laughs> um, so I've pushed pause on the episode of uh, this uh, season of my life <laughs> where we're going through this journey. <laughs> I'm now I'm now going to envision uh, everything I'm going through as a TV show. Only um, there isn't a writer, or I don't have the script. Let's say that I don't. <laughs> don't have what if script. you're the writer it's probably probably why i don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> i never ever do an outline and i regret it every single time i start a paper every um, time <laughs> every time um okay so i i shared last time i broke through some resistance yeah. and uh, around the time i was kind of trying to figure all that out and do that i've seen an influx in my social media feeds about people talking about how um much safer it feels or more comfortable it feels to stay in pain than it is to choose, ha- choose unknown happiness Okay, that's amazing that you're seeing that because I actually just had a talk. I had a conversation with a very good friend of mine about that same thing. Okay, say more. (laughs) We were talking and she basically said, I know I'm in discomfort. I know this is uncomfortable, but it's the discomfort that I'm used to. Yeah. Because... A lot, like, like we keep bringing up or um, I, I've shared a few times, you know, I, I feel like I'm going through things I've already gone through in the past um, yeah. and learning lessons I feel like I already know, but maybe hadn't been acting on. <laughs> so I'm learning them again. <laughs> um, but I, a, a huge thing for me has just been, I don't know what I want to do and I don't know how to do what I want to do. And I just don't know. And a lot of people will kind of respond to you in the moment with like, nobody knows what they're doing. They're all just making it up. And I was like, no, tactically, I honestly don't have any clue how to do something. Um, And I think part of it is that unknown happiness piece. I don't know who Tracy, who doesn't deal with this is. I don't know. Like they, right. Like they say, like, if if you're, if you feel like your manifestations are on pause, are you embodying, are you you, that person you want to be that person who has what it is that you want? And I was just like, I don't know who that person is. So I guess that's my problem. Wow. I can't even, I can't even picture that. Right. Um, yeah, or how it would yeah. look for me versus just like seeing, you know, somebody in real life or TV or whatever, achieve it. Um, okay. Where are you? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going. Nope. That was it. <laughs> okay. This is so weird. And I was going to talk about this a little bit later, but this is perfect During this whole, you know, the hero with a thousand faces, the hero's journey, the hero's adventure, listening to Joseph Campbell, I also came across um, the heroine's journey. And it's by, it's um, Women's Quest for Wholeness by Maureen Murdoch. And basically what she says is she was interested in what it was for the woman for 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 a heroine's adventure a heroine's journey and was that different and she actually spoke to joseph campbell about that and i'm very disappointed because she asked him and remember we talked about this way in the beginning that it is a very masculine view and it was you know many of these things were the 60s the 70s that he was talking about this and developing this and teaching it right 50s 60s 70s and he told her a woman doesn't need the journey because she's already there and maureen was like i don't 
I am not already there. And also, I don't want to just sit there and wait for the freaking hero to come. And so she went on her own journey to figure it out, talking with women, doing all this, you know, deep dive. And so what you're talking about, what you're experiencing is basically the heroine's journey, because at a certain point in and this is what she found to be true in many women is that they get to this place where they've had like success they've they've had success whether it's you know at work like in the you know school work they've they've you own a home like they've had that success and all of a sudden they look around and it's like but what is this for and why do I feel empty? And whose goals were these anyways? And so it almost feels, I think I made up a word. Obviously I did because it's underlined in red. <laughs> it It's almost as if we've been, and I'm going to try and say it this the way I want it to sound, patriarchalized, 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 <laughs> patriarchalized yeah. and capitalized into this sense of these very where the hero's journey is all about like the quest and I'm all alone and I'm doing these things on my own and I'm strong. The heroine's journey is getting back to self and having choice about what it is you want to be doing. It's not, and it's not necessarily just like quitting work and staying at home. It's developing your own choice of what it is you want to do and how you want to create the world around yourself. Well, and it's so it's so interesting. I'm wondering how this work in myth and how it applies. You know, typically when we see a hero's journey, it's like a guy in his early 20s to maybe <laughs> early 30s, right? Like there there's a yeah. typical age yeah. group. And now that our Hollywood superstars who have all the power are aging. We're seeing more aging male action heroes, right? We're seeing yeah. more stories and tales in the, in the public that are not origin stories, that are not young adult trial and tribulations. We're seeing people in their 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, look at Helen Mirren. She's a sex symbol, right? So like, hey, look at, how about the book club? How about this 80 for Brady? These movies that are coming yeah. out with women in their 70s. Yes. I mean, and that's so fabulous. It, it's nice to see that we now have stories and myth to follow that don't end at a certain age, right? Because, mm -hmm. but for me right now, I kind of feel like, I, I'm not going to say it's a midlife crisis because I hope I'm going to live past 70, right? <laughs> like I, I don't like when people say midlife crisis and they're not even 40, right? Like my life I think midlife higher. crisis is actually more, I think it's, first of all, I think it can last longer and I, it's just an easy way to say mid, I think, and midlife crisis, of course, used to just only be for men and, you know, sports yeah, cars and affairs. But, <laughs> but so, you know, thinking of what I'm going through and feeling, like you said, like it's kind of age based in a sense because I've achieved mm -hmm. some milestones and there aren't many milestones left that we celebrate. Right. And and the ones that I haven't had by now have kind of been by choice. Right. Or mm -hmm. it'd be weird to to go back. And so that's why I'm wondering how myth intersects with life, psychology and lifespan theory and like these different crises we have at these different points in our lifespan where our life can kind of take one of two tracks, one of three tracks, and that that mm -hmm. can really set you up for what kind of conflict or no conflict you'll have at the next stage of life that you're in. Um, and so for me right now, like on my journey, that whole when you were saying like, what's the point? You know, some of that's depression. So be aware of that. Right. But like, that's kind yes, of what I've been going yes. through when I, when I'm trying to think of my future and when I'm trying to make goals for the, you know, like I, I'm pretty good at setting short-term goals, you know, up to a year. And I've never really been much of a future planner. And the times I have been by the end of like the two, three year span, like I think the longest thing I've looked forward to doing is graduate school, right? Which is two to three years. And typically yeah. for me at the two year point, if I'm not done, I struggle that last third year where I've, you know, one of the times I did grad school, I messed it up completely because I just was over it. And I, you know, that wasn't who I wanted to be anymore. It wasn't what I wanted mm -hmm. to do. 
And so right now, that is a huge thing that I'm struggling with in my journey is why? Why take the next step? Why why move forward? Why not go back? Um, we know what's back there, right? Um, and so- Oh, for- so it is, it's not necessarily, let me take this other track. It's, a, it's it, you have a knowledge, a desire to go back? Oh, well, or I could just stay here, right? Okay. With what I've already had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, but I don't want to, right. But it's just like, the, yeah. there's no awareness or plan for the future, you know, anything in front of me that I'm kind of excited about or know about. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering now that you say this, if part of it is because so much of our society and, and what we look forward to is patriarchalized is, you know, mm-hmm. and it just, it's not fitting with, with what I could do. No, does it make sense? No, that makes perfect sense. And I think um, I had a thought and then it left my brain. It went away. And, um, oh, I know what I wanted to say is just to remember that no matter what, whether you want to move forward or move back or just stay, you're still on a journey. Mm. It's like you, you can't, you can't, you don't get to stop the journey. Even if you do hit pause, that is still your journey then. And, and I think that, you know, sometimes when we think about like, like you said, it's not really a midlife crisis, but what if that, for lack of a better term, was what you were approaching? Let's say you were approaching that. So this is that approach to something in front of you that you're like, I don't know what this is, but I can already feel it inside of myself. And I feel like I am moving towards that. And what do you need to do to prepare for that when you finally get there? And it, I mean, I would say it is kind of a crisis because what I'm, what my ultimate goal is, and I think why a lot of people have these different crises at certain age stages or after completing milestones or skipping a milestone, right, is because you want fulfillment. But what if you don't know what fulfillment is? is right. Like that should be the simplest thing, you know? Um, but it's kind of like when you're hungry and nothing satiates you, you know, when you're thirsty and there, you know, what you're drinking still isn't doing the trick. It's kind of, I have all this stuff in front of me and it used to fulfill me or it should fulfill me and it's not. And do I stay in this discomfort or do I choose the discomfort of trying new things to, to see what's out there? Oh, I see. So I see what you're, so Obviously, obviously, we started with the whole discomfort thing and we were still talking about it and I had moved on. And yet that is really what we're talking about is that discomfort. And I'm wondering if, again, with that idea of fulfillment, like we have as a society simplified things, first of all, The patriarchy, yes, of course, but we've also simplified things like, like what, what would make it just, you know, whatever is going to fulfill you without giving us any kind of clue as to what that might be, except the only thing is, is that there are clues around you and that's other people and what they say is fulfilling to them. Unless you're like, but I'm not that other person. So I don't know if that would work for me. Well, and I mean, that is one thing that carries me through is knowing what you don't want tells you a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think the challenge with some of these crises um, is you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so there might yes. be something out there that will fulfill you. And I think that's where the crises come up and the decision fee where mm-hmm. like, how do I even find it if I haven't been in, how do I get introduced to it while I'm on this journey? And so, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, mm-hmm. these darker moments, you know, I feel like I can't, I can't name a particular movie or story or myth right now, but I feel like we do have the ones where the hero gives up and they're like, God, I keep fighting the same demon, right? Like I'm over it, right? And then some of them, you know, they kind of have a a downward path. Um, If you've seen the Avengers when Thor kind of just like gives up and loses his Thor body, that kind of is a more recent one that kind of comes up is like Mm. he fought and fought bravely and fought so hard and so well and he still failed. Um, and and he decided to stop trying and then something happened that got him back into it and helped re reignite reignite his spark 
And so that's just it is, you know, so many of us on our day to day hero journeys and and journey of life, Mm -hmm. we don't get that external spark, right? We're not always gifted that (laughs) sometimes you have to be like doing the flint yourself. And when you're already not feeling it, you're not, you're not sparking anything. So it's interesting. And I am going to go back to um, Maureen Murdoch and the heroine's journey and her whole take is that you the whole thing is that you've been split from your for women um that you've been split from your feminine side and she does go on to also explain that a heroine doesn't have to be um female presenting doesn't yeah i was just gonna say we all have masculine and feminine presenting sides so anyone yeah but she is saying that you've been split from your feminine side and been expected to navigate the masculine world and um split from the mother and so the whole journey for the for for the heroine is to get back to that feminine side of her that she's been split apart from so i was thinking about that um and then i was thinking about uh i think in the last episode you brought up the fact that we have a whole episode or a couple episodes on shadow work. Mm -hmm. And and I was, I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to remember that because I was thinking about shadow work and how that is sort of a split off part of us. I also think we have not just shadow split from us, but also the things that we've talked about before too, the glimmer parts. I think we have many fractured parts of us and we need to get put back together before we do really know what fulfillment is, what joy is, what what it is we want to do, what the path is we want to take. And so I think that this part of the journey, this approach to the inmost cave is that part where we actually have to put ourselves back together, like Humpty Dumpty, (laughs) just like it's time to put ourselves back together. And maybe that is the worst part. I don't know. And believe me, you know, I love talking about things that I've just barely scratched the surface of and barely understand myself and have just basically made up because I don't know that it just seems right to me that there are these fractured parts of us just like so have you experienced that i think on a certain level i have without realizing that's what i was experiencing so i think anytime you do like like your you know your your what's that called what your inner child kind of work. I feel like it's not an inner child. I feel like it's a child outside of yourself and that you have to bring that part of you back into yourself. And so like literally I'm just this is sort of gelling in my head right now. But I do think that that might be why there is this sense of what is it that I want to do? What is it that I how can I be fulfilled? Because you're not we're walking around as pieces and parts of ourselves um the you know the sum is greater than the whole of its parts right and so the whole of our parts are not in sum and when you think of like our journey up until this point um pieces of us have been chipped away broken off stolen Mm-hmm. by others and by ourselves to get us this far and so yeah. it's really interesting to think of it as like a calling back um I have done I think it's called a soul retrieval oh yeah uh, you, I feel like yeah. you have said that before. I think during yeah. yeah in 2020 there is an intuitive on TikTok and I was like I got time and some cash to burn <laughs> let's do this and like the whole story she told and like um you know she met my animal guy and all this stuff and it just it was like none of this is resonating with me this must be her experience but then when she got to the part where um she was collecting all these different soul fragments and who she was giving them to like different versions of me and what they were about I was like oh yeah you like tapped in like okay wow. now um and so it did feel kind of healing and so I think that's part of this process is to um you know every every hero and all the myths and all that 
they're not perfect. We like to think of them that way because we see them as the victor and we see well, them sometimes we like sometimes but, we see them disnified too. But yeah, but so they also have shadow periods that they go through it, you know, like stories yeah. don't work without conflict. And a lot of them have like these personal milestones that they have to go through and achieve. And it's really easy to just think of Hercules and his strength and and bravery and courage and all this stuff and then forget about some of the faults and the stuff he had to work through to get to to where he was at the end of the story that we saw and it's really easy to to think of these heroes journeys as like trying to get to happily ever after and as all the most recent fairy tales have been showing us that doesn't exist there is <laughs> there is no happily ever after like there's yeah. it, you're still in it <laughs> you're still here <laughs> yeah yeah i you know when i was thinking about this um and actually, when you mentioned the soul retrieval, I have done energy retrieval. So my own, and you know, when you yeah. go about your day, you leave pieces and parts of your energy out there too, and maybe with other people or whatever, and you can call your energy back. So that's one thing. So that reminded me of that. But then I also was like, because with shadow work, we naturally think of Carl Jung mm -hmm. um, and Jung and Campbell cite each other and or did cite each other and so i was like what happens when i type in young and campbell and shadow or archetypes or whatever and and i did get some interesting things so got the archetypes you know got the the archetypes from young and from campbell and then i was like shadow work and somehow i landed on shadow archetypes oh. that I've never seen before what are and they? there are 12 shadow archetypes so there's the sage the innocent explorer ruler creator caregiver magician hero interesting rebel lover jester and orphan and so what I'm wondering is, what if, maybe not all 12, but what if we have like a shadow ruler, a shadow orphan, a shadow innocent? You know what I mean? Like maybe those are, maybe, so, so maybe it is all shadow work, but your shadows represent different parts of you. What? doesn't mean if my response to this is I don't want to do any more shadow work <laughs> I've done the shadow work it is, I have three lights in my face right now <laughs> no shadows <laughs> okay. my immediate then reaction is just like god we've I, I just came out of the woods and yeah. now I have to go into a cave like there's what's that children's song or story like can't go under it can't go over it gotta go through it I don't want to go through it anymore <laughs> like so okay then let's go back to what I said before what if there's pieces of you that were bright and shiny that have been chipped away what if you tried to what if you did glimmer work instead of shadow work okay I'll do that <laughs> All right, join us in a month from today as we host a glimmer work workshop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kind of feel like it'll be like um, you know, I forget what the it's called, but that little lighter in Harry at the end of Harry Potter that Dumbledore like used oh, to yeah. like collect the light and like give it back. Mm -hmm. And how that's how Ron found his friends again, right? Mm -hmm. Um that even in the shadows, like you can have these little bright glimmers still or yeah. call back yeah. parts of you. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess, like I said, this is not fully formed, obviously, but we'd like to talk about things that we haven't always fully, We're you know. We're working it out, yeah. We are working it out. But I do, I do want to kind of go back to just what you were saying about not feeling fulfilled and not even knowing what would fulfill you. And yet I also get the sense that maybe you're tired of trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> like, that, like, that's just it. Like we, and we have a whole episode on it. Like I'm tired of improving myself. At what point is it enough? You know? And so we try and, you know, frame what we talk about on the show and, um, 
doing things and living in such a way that you're just naturally your brightest self. Mm -hmm. It's not that you have to fix or be anything different. Mm -hmm. You just have to be in the right mind, body, soul space to just exude who you are and to just live in that fulfilling, happy place. But sometimes, you know, when, when we're going through all this stuff, or like I said, like, uh, how I, how I kind of started it with the, the, do, I, I guess part of the lack of fulfillment is not when I can't picture or envision or make a vision board about what the next version of happy, bright Tracy will be. I'm stuck in the discomfort of who I am until I figure that out. Right. So even though you're like, you've done so much work, but you're still in discomfort. Well, that's, I mean, that's the, that's just it, right? If you're somebody who has self-awareness and who does any level of any work on any area of your life, your person mm-hmm. or whatever, there is no achievement state. Happiness does not lie on the other side of achievement. As soon as you get something, you need something else to look forward to, right? And if you don't focus on that, or if you don't find that, eventually what currently brings you happiness, fulfillment, success at some point, it won't feel like that anymore. It's just the nature of being human, right? Like, I I hope I have, like I just shared, more than twice my current age left in me. And how I currently am living, it's good. I'm content, right? Like, and that's the other part of the, the lack of fulfillment is I'm content. I don't want to lose what I currently have. This is a great baseline. This is nice. But what's next? And it's like that discomforting part of not like, like a lot of these heroes and these um, um, myths that we're talking about, these journeys, they know what the end point is, right? They have a heroine to save or they have like a goal to achieve. Yeah, that's true. You know, what are the ones that don't, who are just kind of, you know, like I think of the show Supernatural and like how many times do those guys die? Like, <laughs> Talk about exhausting. <laughs> right? The show started very, you know, specific premise, saving people, hunting things, right? And that was their journey. And then as they did that, they just kept getting pulled deeper and deeper into like their true calling. Um, and so, and, and it got more and more frustrating for them on the show, right? Like they had, um, those boys had a lot of angst, right? (laughs) And so it's that part of you where it's like, I don't want to complain about where I'm at, but I've kind of mastered this. What's next and how do I prepare for it? You know, and a lot of people in my life right now are saying, you know, just be depressed or just do this or just heal. And that's great. I can do that for 12 weeks, right? Like I know I have a time bound situation for me personally for some of my stuff, but it's not being able to prepare in the meantime for after that 12 weeks when I'm like, I'm going to hit that 12 weeks and still wonder what's next. Yeah. And so okay, a couple kind of things like, came so to me. So it sounds like I'm in the cave. <laughs> it does sound like you're in the cave. And we were going to, like, that was going to be the next one, which, of course, it can carry over to the next one. It does sound like you're in the cave because of that feeling of discomfort. But something came to me, and I could be way off, because sometimes a feeling of discomfort is actually like a prescience. What's that? How you say it? That, that, that pre-knowing that that um omniscience no, no. that's a, I, okay it's um, it's a pre and it's not like a clear um like a precognizance it's not that it's sort of like that but but it's that feeling that knowing that that feeling of something is going to be happening and yeah, so like i'm a, wondering if that discomfort is more of like a a, a whatever the word is <laughs> like a pre-knowing yeah. that actually something is coming towards you or going to be happening, but you don't know how, what it is. And it's not that you're just stuck. It's that you actually know something's going to be happening and you don't know how to prepare for it. Oh, okay. So just since, as we've said in uh, a few episodes now, you tend to go through the same things over and over again, right? Like even yeah. if you feel like you've mastered them. Yeah. So like I clearly missed that I was approaching the cave. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like when you're approaching the cave then? What What is that kind of like? See, I feel like approach, I think a lot of these things blend together. And I think yeah. in real life, they're going to 
some of them you're going to loop back around on before you actually get to the inmost cave, right? So to me, that those tests, enemies, and allies sort of blend into that approach to the cave. But the approach, supposedly, you would know you're approaching the cave. And that is when you have that planning period, that preparation period, or that period where you're like, oh, let's have sex for one last time before I go in this cave. <laughs> you know, that would be like the Hollywood thing to do. Um, but but you know you're going into that cave because you've had all these tests, trials, enemies. It's sort of like these little mini cave okay. moments. So when, when it comes to personal development and goal set, you know, we do these things, right? I... I knew I wanted to move my life forward. So I probably yeah. like, I knew, I knew this, this could happen, right? Like I like this, that this was always a possibility. And so I think maybe possibly I just ran into the cave. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Like that's, that's how we're doing stuff, right? Like that seems on brand, <laughs> right? That, that maybe just part of um some of the goals you set or some of the eras of life you're in. Sometimes you do just kind of turn the corner and you're in the darkness. I just saw a TikTok of a guy. I don't know where the forest is, but the trees are so tall. It's pitch black when you enter. Pitch black. Like it's some fairy tale looking stuff. It it was sunny high noon and he panned to the entrance of the woods and it's pitch black. Like darker than the depths of the ocean wow. um and so I feel like just some points in life like unless like we were saying earlier unless you turn around like you can camp for a bit but eventually you gotta go through it <laughs> well so I think that this might be interesting to take this conversation and bring it forward for our next episode to actually talk about okay you're in the cave now what now what yeah now what and I don't know that we'll get to anything but it'd be interesting because I have a feeling that there are more people out there who are like okay well I'm, hey and I mean I'm there uh, too <laughs> I I we're taking some time off after recording this. I have two weeks to maybe see if I get through the cave myself. So we'll see if we continue the therapy of Tracy and the journey I'm on yeah. in this time. Yeah. Um, Cause this, yeah, this, no, I've really enjoyed this. This is uh, maybe I have enough books to read as you know, but maybe I'll skim hers. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for listening uh, to us work through this and being here with us. We'd love it if you could share this conversation with more people. Um, so send it to them, talk about it, uh, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. If you, uh, you can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under the Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. And with that, we hope you have a bright and beautiful day. Get out of the cave. <laughs> or stay in it for for at least two more weeks. <laughs>